an article in the Portland Mercury about the racist and anti-Semitic cult, yes, cult, that my former intimate partner from Chicago joined. I'm going to refer to her as a fabricated intimate partner for reasons that I revealed in a previous TikTok and I will reveal in a later TikTok. It will be specifically about how this group gets people to join its cult. That may have sound kind of wonky, gets people to join this cult, but I put it that way because this group seems to have started as a sort of joke, but now it's become a genuine cult. As this Portland Mercury article says, the name of the group seems innocent enough, the Partridge Family Temple, but quote the article, even so many Portlanders believe that the sunshine persona of the Partridge Family Temple casts a dark shadow more closely resembling that of the Manson family. Keep that phrase resembling that of the Manson family in mind. The context of wait for it. Now the group has two co-founders. One is sort of a public facing co-founder. Now there's a quiet co-founder, well known in anti-fascist and anti-racist circles a very dangerous right-wing figure. Now, the public-facing co-founder, uh, a man who calls himself Sean Partridge, is known as Mr. Hate Crimes. That's his nickname. That's the nickname that the group gave him. This group has been accused of committing hate crimes in Portland, mainly against lesbian people and transgender people. This is Sean Partridge in the Holocaust Denier Gateway video that I showed you. I took it from YouTube. As I said in that uh, previous TikTok, it is a video that mocks the story of Anne Frank because many people who are Holocaust deniers believe that the diary of Anne Frank is a fabricated story that was written by an adult woman, a Jewish woman, um, in the United States and that the events in the book never happened. Now, the more private co-founder of this group who has become more instrumental in growing the group's franchises, that's what they call them, is a man named Boyd Rice. This is an article about Boyd Rice on Artnet, the website run by Art News, talking about a 2018 show in Brooklyn that got canceled after there was an uproar in New York about ties Boyd Rice had to racist fascist groups. And in that article, uh, they had a picture of Boyd Rice that was published in Sassy Magazine in 1988 with the founder of the American Front. The American Front was a, is, was a sister group of the National Front in Europe. The article also talks about the video I posted earlier on TikTok of Boyd Rice being interviewed by Tom Metzger, who in the 1980s and 1990s had a cable access show called Race and Reason. On that cable access show, Boyd Rice is talking explicitly about the tactics that uh, the Partridge family um, temple uses to recruit people and that Boyd Rice learned from similar fascist groups in the British counterculture. And you can see from this article, it says that Tom Metzger was a member of this group. He wasn't just a member of this group. He was a, the Grand Dragon. Boyd Rice also had a personal relationship with Charles Manson. He built that personal relationship by getting a job as a prison guard in the prison where Manson was housed. And this is a recording that was put on YouTube where Charles Manson talks about his relationship with Boyd Rice. Charles Manson's cult combine European supremacist beliefs with Satanism. Combine those two things into something I will call chaotic nihilism. Chaotic nihilism. In that Satan is a symbol of destruction of society, a dark void of meaninglessness. Boyd Rice also had a close relationship with Anton LaVey, founder of, let me put it more accurately, accurately, the author of the Satanic Bible. If you know anything about the history of Anton LaVey, you know that when he first started that group, they also had beliefs that are considered to be European supremacist, uh, but those beliefs really came from the rampant and rank individualism that Ayn Rand purported, and the beliefs of Ayn Rand became very popular in the late 60s and the early 1970s, when Anton LaVey sort of became a household name. Later on in his life, Anton LaVey denounced Boyd Rice and denounced European supremacist, anti-Semitic, and racist beliefs. And I will opine that Boyd Rice created these sort of relationships with alarming figures in the counterculture so that he could build a movement like the Partridge Family Temple uh, in the way that he talked about on Tom Metzger's program. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that Anton LaVey was a great guy. He also wasn't necessarily a bad person. He was a product of the late 1960s counterculture which was a living embodiment of don't do drugs, kids. 
And this group is also a living embodiment of don't do drugs, kids. You dive deeper into the personal histories of people from the culture, counterculture who became part of this movement because they were ejected from their local counterculture scene. The problem that the Portland counterculture had with the Partridge Family Temple was their tendency to commit public violence against women. That is what this article centers around. They have also been accused of committing violence against women they don't know, and something that I know that is starting to be investigated, actual criminal investigations into this now, is members of this group run an online forum where they dox domestic, the addresses of domestic violence victims so that abusers can find them or other men who believe that women should be subjugated. That is a little known belief, all European supremacist groups, but they dox domestic violence survivors and the addresses of domestic violence shelters or hotels where domestic violence survivors are housed or rather people escaping uh, domestic violence are housed, that complete strangers can re-traumatize these women. I was asked to do videos about this group by a person who works for a domestic violence program in Idaho. Because the domestic violence shelters who are worried about the safety of their clients do not want police to ignore what they are doing. And there is an actual arrest of a former husband who got the address of his wife and his stepdaughter in Lexington, Kentucky. The address of his former wife who he abused from that forum that people in this group run, run, runs. And to their pro-DV stance, and the fact that almost every single major alt-right figure is a part of this cult, Jim Goad is also involved in this cult. A thumbnail of Jim Goad and a blurb about him from Takis Magazine, which features right-wing commentary, but a little-known fact about Takis Magazine is that it was founded by a Greek millionaire who was a member of the Golden Dawn. Google what the Golden Dawn was. Also, a European supremacist group that tried to take over Greece after their economy crashed during the last global recession. The Partridge Family Temple and members of the Partridge Family Temple are on the radar of police in the United Kingdom. And in Germany, uh, Germany has an anti-fascist police force that watches these kind of groups on the left and the right. I'll get more into the idea of, the con of uh, politics being a circle rather than linear spectrum with binaries in a future TikTok. But this couple that got arrested in the UK said that they were explicitly inspired by Boyd Rice and affiliated musical acts. And it has been alleged by many people is that the nature of the cult, which is actually positioned as a synchronistic religion, synchronistic religion that influenced many European supremacist groups going back to members of nefarious political party from Germany. I'm going to dig up a book that talks about that as proof. People have alleged that the technicolor kookiness is a mask for encouraging people to commit more horrific acts, deliberately using free speech and the so-called breaking of symbols, appropriating the Dada movement and the situationist movement. You say, wow, that sounds really complicated. That's the whole point. Central members of this group have court cases all over the United States that usually wound up in a felony or coverage in the media that would lead to social isolation. And the members of this group, of course, blame that on the Jewish media and the multicultural feminist LGBTQ conspiracy often pops up its head in more mainstream alt-right stuff. By the way, to cancel culture, this is Jim Goad with comedian Pat Oswald, who I don't think is funny at all, and that gesture that they're making is a reference to something called the Night of the Long Knives. A lot of Republicans have not been very fond of Patton Oswalt's intelligence, and neither am I. And this is an example of it. It's also an example of why I think cancel culture is really problematic. Patton Oswalt is absolutely aware of Jim Goad's history. He said he's a great writer. Examples of Jim Goad's brilliance on Takis Mags are articles like Being Nice to Black People, or George Floyd, the big lie. And Jim Goad has put forth brilliant opinions like, the main problem is we've been far too nice to black people in the United States. You can see that this group's members create a series of whistle pig holes that will lead to the social bubonic plague of anti-Semitism and racism spreading and becoming mainstream. Whistle pigs, by the way, do carry the bubonic plague. I know they're cute. I don't know what those little critters are called outside of Idaho. More on this group in the future. In the next TikTok, I will talk about Holocaust deniers, their campaign against the Diary of Anne Frank.
And I do not endorse these beliefs, but we need to understand them to fight anti-Semitism and the growth of this cult.